Hey, my name is Justin. If you're new here, go ahead and hit subscribe and ding the bell for more videos to help your worship team. I want to start off again, just going for the jugular, really, really giving you guys some valuable content here at the beginning. I want to say a statement to you guys that might seem really, really abrasive, but I just want to throw it out there and then I'll talk about it for a second. The stage is meant to break you because no one is to be worshiped but God alone. The stage is meant to break you because no one is to be worshiped except God alone. There's so many things we could talk about in terms of that statement, but you are a worship leader. You are someone who is on a platform doing a beautiful service to the body of Christ. You're not up there to be rich and famous and all those different things. You are there to serve, right? And you feel like perhaps I've given my life to this at a church, at a house of prayer, at, to a city, to a gathering, whatever it is. Like, shouldn't I be like experiencing some of the blessings of God? Like, shouldn't I, you know, mostly feel good on stage? Shouldn't I mostly feel good when I walk off stage? Like, what is going on? Like, the stage is meant to break you because no one is to be worshiped except God alone. We can talk a lot more about this and we will in the future videos, but I want to just leave you with this uh, introductory concept that God is after something more in your life than just feeling good about being a worship leader. God is after something more in your life than just feeling perhaps successful all the time as a worship leader. God is after relationship with you. God is after relationship with you. And in, in my flesh, I wanna say, you know, I've been a worship leader for 22 years. I wanna say, if that's true, God, I would have been a lot closer to you, I think, if I would have felt your presence a whole lot more on that platform. And like, what kind of like, you know, system are you, are you working up there, God? And God knows, here's the thing, God knows how much pride um, I have. God knows the best way to nurture and bring forth the deepest levels of love for him and his son in my heart. I think I know the best way. I think it's family's great, work's great, money's great, health is great, everything's great. I will love you with my whole heart. But God has a different economy system. And if we look at the Bible, guys, God has a different economy system of what 2019 or 2020 would say about the way things are supposed to be in our world. I mean, mostly we hear so many times, like if you feel healthy, if you feel strong, if you feel whatever, God is thus blessing you. I would challenge you to look at what the life of Jesus was like, at what the life of Moses was like, of what the life of Paul was like. Show me someone in the Bible, guys, who had a thriving, successful ministry for the kingdom of God, who did not first have a intense season in the wilderness. Show me someone in the Bible. Show me a prophet from the Old Testament. Show me a leader in the New Testament who didn't have either intense wilderness seasons and or suffer intense persecution and affliction for his name. There's a different economy system, as I said, that the Bible gives us. We cannot be devoid of that. We have to be in touch with truth, not just in touch with what the later latest leadership book tells us or what the later latest pastor says of, you know, focusing on one verse in the Bible and just saying it's all about this. You know, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you, blah, 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 blah. Beautiful verse. I, that verse is on my personal prayer list and I pray that over my life. I believe it with my whole heart. The challenge can come when the perspective is not the whole of the Bible. Then when I, I don't feel that verse uh, the plans to prosper for you happening in my life, I'm like, oh no, I've done something wrong or all these different things. It's like, maybe this is just God has me in a wilderness season. Maybe this is just God teaching me that this is really not about me. There's a verse in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, and we'll talk about this in a later video as well, but in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, Paul, he says, um, you have this treasure in your earthen vessel. It's a beautiful reality, your jar of clay. You have this treasure in your jar of clay. And not to give a whole teaching on that, but basically it's talking about you have the Holy Spirit living inside of your being. If you're a born again believer, Ephesians chapter one tells us that you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of God until the day of your full redemption when Jesus splits the sky and you meet him in the air, right? Christianity 101, you have the Spirit of God inside your earthen vessel. Paul in 2 Corinthians 4 verse seven calls that treasure. And I have a friend who says, you know, it's like you have a billion dollars living inside of you. Why are you only living on 10 cents a day? 
Why are you only taking 10 cent a day withdrawals? You have a billion dollars, if you will, of the Holy Spirit living inside of you. So it's a beautiful reality that Paul talks about. But then as he continues talking in verse 7, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, he says, you have this treasure in your earthen vessel. And here it is. To show that this all-surpassing power or treasure is of God and not of you. What is Paul saying? Paul said, you have treasure inside of you, the Holy Spirit, and God wants to manifest himself through you for his kingdom. Do mighty exploits, signs, wonders, miracles, the glory of God breaking out in worship sets. And one of the things that I've often prayed for during my worship sets is that people in my worship sets who have glasses or contact would suddenly get 20-20 vision, you know? Like, so Paul says, you have this treasure in your earthen vessel, but God is going to orchestrate your life in such a way that at the end of the day, you will say that treasure is of God. It's not of me. The stage is meant to break you, to draw you into deep, deep, dependent friendship upon Jesus Christ, because no one is to be worshiped except God alone.